here I have my Francaise gown on my dress form. I haven't looked at this dress in a long time. It's probably been four or five years since I've worn it and I've only ever worn it twice. It has these weird little bits in the center right now because I had planned on converting this to wear it to a 1860s fancy dress ball. So I was going to do one of those where they wore an 18th century dress over their 19th century corsetry and hoops. So I had those on there to sort of deal with how you have a curved waist in a corset that you don't have in 18th century stays. So that's, that's what these guys are. They were a later edition. Um, this dress was my first Francaise and one of my earlier dresses, to be honest. So I definitely was really inexperienced when I made it. I didn't use a pattern. I looked at some original images and I looked at some blogs of people who had made them, but I just wasn't experienced enough to do this on my own. It was a perfectly fine dress. I mean, like I said, I've worn it, um, but I definitely was not happy with it. And I wasn't sure why when I first made it, but now that I'm a little bit more experienced and I've made another Francaise that I'm very happy with, I certainly recognize where I went wrong. Now, the main issue with this dress and where I went wrong is that I just did not have enough fabric, and that is the bottom line. These dresses eat up a tremendous amount of yardage of fabric. I think on my most recent one, I used 12 yards, and it was self-trimmed, but I still had to take a big fake panel out of the petticoat, and I was really skimping on the trim at the end. I believe it's been a long time, but I think that I made this dress out of eight yards of fabric, maybe nine. Um, so the real issue is that the pleats are incredibly shallow. They just don't have anywhere near enough volume in them. So they don't have that beautiful big floof when you walk around. And I also, now that I'm looking at it, I obviously, I didn't measure these and I eyeball a lot of my sewing, but like one side has deeper pleats than the other. So I can understand why it hung oddly. I mean, you can see this one on here is so shallow it doesn't even fall out from under this primary pleat, so it's really weird. I also don't have anywhere near enough volume in the waist, um, so it looked really skimpy over my hoops. And I I put these pleats in a, a weird spot. I, I just don't know what I was thinking. Um, I did hurry this dress. I was in a real rush when I was making it for an event. Um, so I think I didn't have as much time to fiddle with it as I probably would have liked to. Although I did sew it mostly by hand, weirdly, so I guess good for me. All the visible stitches of this are by hand, although they're not, um, they're not very good. You can see I did a repair here where I pulled out the sleeve at one point. Um, so this is going to be a good dress to harvest fabric from because you know there's still a lot of really big pieces of fabric it's actually a little bit too long for me so I should actually be able to keep the skirts as they are now and hopefully just pleat them to a new dress and shouldn't have to do that much altering to them this dress also has a matching petticoat with it which is going to be an excellent source of fabric um, it is nice and full it has this big ruffle on it it has these little puffs on it which I can take off um, it is too long for me, so again, I'll be able to trim off all this really dirty hem. Since it's too long, it means that I stepped on it a lot when I was wearing it, and it really is, is quite filthy compared to some other ones. I did some really weird things with this petticoat, which again, I'm not sure why. Um, like, for example, I have these tiny little extra pieces that I put in on the sides, although this side is smaller than the one on this side. So this one makes a little bit more sense because obviously I needed some extra volume in the skirt, but I don't know why I made them unevenly. I guess I was just running out of fabric. Um, on the top for the side treatment, I did a little drawstring over the side, so it's not actually pleated down, um, which will be nice when I take it out because it'll be very easy to just iron this out and have a nice flat surface. This tightened up over the pocket hoops. Um, I believe that I saw this on an extant gown from either the Met or the Museum of Fine Arts. I can't remember exactly, but that's where I got that idea. Um, and look at my embarrassing lack of finishing. I can tell this was just desperation to get it done, which is why it shredded so poorly because I didn't fold this over and enclose the raw edge of this. So it probably would not have survived that many more wearings, even if it was uh, still a, a functional dress that fit me. 
So it'll be nice to give this fabric a new life. It's a really beautiful color. It has a nice weight to it. I remember it being very nice to work with. Um, at that time I hadn't worked with a lot of silk, so it was a real pleasure. So I'm looking forward to, to giving this dress another life and some extra use. And it'll be a good way to reuse this fabric as well. Now that I have the back piece totally unpleated, I can get a better idea of the amount of fabric I have in there. So it looks like I'm right at about 49 inches. And that sounds like a lot of fabric, but remember when you're pleating down into all those pleats, it goes away really quickly. I consulted the American Duchess Guide to 18th Century Dressmaking which is what I used as the guide for my newest Francaise dress and they actually recommend 80 inches which I know sounds like a lot um, and I'm not actually sure that I did use a full 80 inches for my last one that I did the yellow dress um, but it was certainly I think in the range of 70 to 75 it just is critical to have that volume on the back of the gown because otherwise it just looks skimpy it doesn't hang right and if you're not getting the full drama of a Francaise gown uh, what's the point <laughs> right go big or go home this is the top of one of the skirt panels after it has been ironed. I knew this was probably going to be the trickiest part to deal with because when something's been sewn up and pleated for years and years, it really can leave a lasting effect on the fabric. So this is just with my iron as hot as it will go, and I am using a lot of steam on it, but I'm gonna try a pressing cloth next to see if that can help get some of these pleats out more permanently. A pressing cloth is just a separate piece of fabric that you dampen and then iron that over your fashion fabric. And this helps to allow you to get a good bit of water into the fabric without actually having to spray your silk um, just straight on with a mister. So I just use the little spray function in my iron, add some water to it, and then just go over. Like I said, you get a lot of extra dampness there and the steam can really help to release the wrinkles. Let's see. Oh yeah, that actually looks significantly better. Um, on the screen, they are a lot more obvious than they are in person, I suppose, because of the way the shot silk in here sort of radiates to my visible eye. Um, you can see the creases a lot more clearly here on the camera, but I think in real life, they're gonna be almost hidden, especially if I can use them in a spot that's going to be pleated up again.
I am working on getting my petticoat done for this before I do the actual fitting of the gown bodice. So I have my dress form all set up. You can see it here behind me. It's got the pocket hoops, it has an under petticoat, and I'm actually fitting this over my Francaise gowns petticoat. And the reason I'm doing this is because I know that the length on that petticoat is perfect for me. So this way I can just not have to worry about adjusting my dress form. I know that if I can make the petticoat long enough to cover the edge of this petticoat, then I'll have a perfect length for my new dress. I am going to be repleating and just testing out the length on the old petticoat panels. I've totally taken them apart, and so now it's just hoping that the length is okay. My original hoops that I wore under the original Francaise were a little bit smaller than these, so I'm not certain I'm gonna have the exact amount of length that I need in order to make the petticoat length proper. So this is just a little bit of a test. I have the original panel all ironed out and ready to go. I'm just gonna make sure that the length of it is proper for these new undergarments that I have. This is the original side panel for the petticoat before I took her after I've taken it apart. And so I'm basically just going to pin it onto the form and see where it hits to make sure that it actually is enough length to cover it. I'm really relieved, uh, particularly because this piece already has the hem put in it from the original petticoat. I did not take out the initial hem because I did it all by hand, so I was really hoping I would be able to preserve that and just repleat this down into a brand new petticoat, and it looks like that is going to be perfect, which is excellent news. It's going to save me a lot of work and also a lot of annoying patching I was worried I would have to do if I needed to lengthen this waist a little bit in order to have it flow smoothly over the hoop. So, Lucky me, it means I don't have to do anything, and I can essentially use these two petticoat pieces as is, just with some extra pleating. Yay! This is the inside of one of my petticoat panels, and I have found something that past Taylor did that I want to curse her for, uh, and that is that I, I added all these extra pieces, which I talked about a little bit in the very beginning of the video. I think that I did this in order to give myself a little bit of extra width in the petticoat, but I don't really recall. And annoyingly, I did not finish these inside uh, seam edges in any way, so they are just fraying like crazy. I suspect I did this because of time and also because of laziness, which is my greatest enemy as a seamstress. So I'm going to do a little bit of pinking. I'm not going to, I'm just not going to go to the trouble of French seaming all of these, but I am going to at least pink them so they're not fraying everywhere and shredding. And I also noticed that I have uh, this little tear on both this piece and the other one. And this was where, if you recall, I had it gathered up into a little gathering area. This was the split where they gathered together. So I'm gonna have to patch this, I think, because it's really has potential for tearing a lot more. It's a little bit too worn down to just be able to pull together, so I might have to add a little patch to it. And you know, now that I say that, I think I'm actually changing my mind. And I think what I may do is just cut off this whole section. I think that this, these petticoat panels are absolutely wide enough for what I need them for. Losing this is not going to make that much of a difference, but it will save me some effort here. And then I can also use this extra piece that I'm cutting off as trim a little bit later on. So that's what I'm going to do next. Okay, all done pinking these edges now. This is a salvage, so I didn't have to do this one. I have a nice little pile of um, little ratty pieces so this is not ideal uh, it's certainly not the way that I would recommend you do this type of construction but at least it will keep these uh, pieces from shredding too much and leaving strings behind
So my next step in the process is actually working on the bodice pattern itself. I have the petticoat done and I have a really nice preliminary pattern that Modern Mantua Maker made for me, but we didn't have to get a chance to do the final fitting on that. So I'm going to be hanging out with Jenny Rose next week and it would be a really good opportunity for me to have her do the final fitting with me over my new petticoat and all the correct underpinning. So that's going to be the step for today. I'm going to go ahead and cut out the modern bodice pattern and get it made up in a muslin so that we can fit it next week. Now because the pattern pieces are nice and small on this bodice, I'm actually just going to use some scrap muslin that I had since part of this project is about uh, using a little bit less stuff. I'm trying to recycle as much as I possibly can, so I'm actually using a piece of muslin from an old project that I scrapped that actually happens to be large enough to do something like this. The only key with uh, using scraps is just to make sure to watch your grain lines. You do not want to get those messed up and mixed up um, because that can really alter the fit of your muslin that you're fitting. So I'm going to get these cut out now. So I was hoping I would be able to use the sleeve pattern or sleeve pieces as is and just do a little bit of altering to them. But as you can see, they're just a little bit too small for this pattern. And plus this pattern does not have the seam allowances on it. So it's actually even a little bit smaller than it looks here. That's a little annoying, um, but I probably will piece the sleeve so that I can reuse as much of the fabric as possible and then just add, you know, like a, an extra band of fabric on this side or something like that to give it a little bit more wiggle room. So. Uh, that's what they would have done then as well, so I will take the lead from our historical forebearers here.